what's going on everybody and welcome back we have a ton to talk about in today's video including three rounds of storms that are going to impact us here in the eastern United States and I think as these rounds progress it'll likely get worse round after round so we're already dealing with round one right now getting started here in the plains uh, and that will bring a swath of snow and severe weather within the next 48 hours then round two comes this weekend which will likely bring more snow as well uh, and then round three, which still a lot of question marks around, but that one could be quite the doozy, I think, for some of us here. Uh, so a lot changing, a lot different than what we were dealing with just a week ago in terms of weather here across the eastern United States. So uh, if you liked the video, make sure to hit that like button uh, and go ahead and subscribe too while you're at it. We're building quite the community here on this channel. Um, and I really want you to stay up to date because I think we're really getting into quite the pattern here over the next two weeks. So with all that said, uh, let's go ahead and get right into it because, like I said, we do have a lot to discuss. So going ahead and looking at satellites so far, uh, we've had some showers here moving through the mid-Atlantic. I know here in Charlotte, when I was walking to class, uh, I got rained on pretty good. And you would think I would have brought an umbrella uh, but <laughs> for some reason I didn't so I can promise you we've been dealing with some rain here in the mid-Atlantic and southeast so far today But luckily uh, that is beginning to push off uh, Into the Northeast and off into the Atlantic Ocean But we what we also have is what I'm calling round one here getting going out here into the plains uh, And that will likely start causing those winter storm conditions here within the next 12 to 24 hours so um, not too much going on on satellite, but that should become more active as we get into the future. Looking at our current hazards, uh, this is what I'm talking about. I already have those winter storm warnings here in pink and the winter storm watches in blue there into the plains uh, for those winter storm conditions that are, again, likely going to begin within the next 12 to 24 hours. And then some winter weather advisories up here into upstate New York and Vermont for um, what is left over of that other system that we've been dealing with that has moved up through the Great Lakes. So looking at tonight's temperatures, do want to touch on this. Again, quite a warm night here into the southeast and into the mid-Atlantic as that next system gets cranking up here. Uh, you'll have that snow on the north side here in those freezing temperatures, but that's also going to help to bring up this warm Gulf air, uh, which will also lead to some severe storms tomorrow into sections of Arkansas, Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. So uh, looking at that tomorrow, again, this is going to be quite the warm day tomorrow. Uh, and if you like the warmth, you might want to enjoy these next couple days of this warm weather because I think after this, we're likely going to become more seasonable uh, and maybe even below average temperatures as we get deeper into uh, January and maybe even the start of February. So if you're a springtime person, go ahead and enjoy these next couple of days. Uh, and then looking at our Thursday Again, above average temperatures for a lot of us. Uh, pick your location and you can see what your high temperature will be here on Thursday. All right, so taking a look here at uh, our models, uh, we're going to take a look at round one, two, and three here, but we're going to go in depth on round one. Uh, and then whenever we look at the long range, we'll go more in depth on the other two rounds, but we are going to touch on those here really quickly. So looking at the GFS, uh, this is round one right here that I'm talking about. Uh, you see this low pressure getting going here over the plains. Uh, this is going into tomorrow afternoon here. You see we'll have that swath of snow here to the north, and then we'll be dealing with those severe storms to the southern side of this storm system. Uh, that system then going into your Thursday afternoon um, will begin to bring another or continue that heavy swath of snow to the north side of it. And uh, honestly, on the southern side of this, it has trended less rainy. So throughout the southeast, I do think it'll be cloudy, uh, maybe even drizzly with some showers, but I don't think it'll be a complete washout on your Thursday. A uh, bit of a different story here into the northeast where I think we'll have that heavier precipitation uh, combined with that snow on the north side. But as we get into your Thursday night here, uh, we get some of that snow to, de excuse me, to develop here into New England, uh, and then as well as some heavy rain on the southern end of this. A place like Boston, really a tough forecast. So you're going to be right on that rain snow line with this storm. Um, but the, this will then kind of phase a bit off onto the coast, and then we'll have this other secondary low. Uh, what that's going to do is keep some of that unsettled weather there into the northeast for a bit of an extended period of time. So uh, even on your Friday afternoon, still dealing with some back-end snow on this. I think Boston will definitely get in on the back-end snow of this, even if they don't on the front end. 
uh, and that will produce definitely some wintry conditions there before clearing out going into Saturday. So that's round one on the GFS. Round two here gets going as we get into this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. You see another low pressure form here and once again producing more snow on the north side of that. Uh, and then with this second system, I'm honestly quite concerned about some flash flooding risks. Uh, we're going to get quite the fire hose of precipitation here into the southeast uh, out of the Gulf of Mexico, which could definitely produce some flooding concerns here with round two. Uh, also with round two here, as you can see, really just that fire hose of moisture here into the southeast, uh, still dealing with heavy snow on the north side of this low pressure. Uh, and this, again, is into this coming weekend. Uh, and this could produce you know, quite a good snowstorm as well for someone here into New England, depending on the track of this low. Uh, and then, again, more coastal rain and flooding possible here with round two. That moves out going into the start of next week. And that'll set the stage for what I think is round three, which could be quite the doozy. Uh, you see here, round three getting going here on the GFS. And uh, look at this, how it evolves. Quite quite the strong system. Once again, snow on the north side, severe storms possibly on the southern side, as well as very heavy rainfall. Uh, and this one, again, I think this one really could finally get us our first real snow here into the northeast this winter. Um, of course, we have plenty of time to map that out, but uh, I'm really intrigued here with this system going into uh, the 25th to 27th time frame of January. So we'll look at the same thing here on the Euro. Round one, again, we've been talking about a lot, uh, dealing with that heavy snow on the north end of this within the next couple days and severe storms tomorrow on the south side of this. As that continues to advance, that will clear out, again, about the same impacts the GFS shows, uh, but that clears out by this weekend. And then the Euro here setting up round two as well going into this weekend. And I, again, snow here on the northern side. And look at this fire hose of moisture. I want you to pay attention here into the southeast. All of this rainfall kind of training over the same areas there. Uh, we'll have to watch for that for sure. Euro here with round two brings the slow a bit further south and east and produces quite the snowstorm here into New England. So... A lot of discrepancies here, and this is less than a week out now um, between the GFS and Euro, and the Euro really cranks this thing up and gets, uh, honestly, near nor'easter-like conditions here into the interior northeast uh, and quite the onshore flow with onshore flooding here into southeastern New England with this round two. So again, more impactful than round one. Euro really bombs that thing out. And then round three on the Euro really gets cranking here. And look at this storm. So, again, this is far out. This is between 7 and 10 days, but uh, between the ensembles and the operational runs, this has kind of been a signal that's been hinted out uh, for a while now with the model. So, between January 25th and 27th, I really have my eyes here on the East Coast for the potential of quite the storm. Uh, and that's round three, so we're already dealing with round one now and then round two this weekend. Um, so again, very active weather ahead of us, but going more in depth on round one, since that is more of the near term impact before we then discuss more of the long range and those other two rounds, uh, snowfall with round one here, again, a good swath of snow here through the plains, great lakes and into the Northeast here, uh, especially here into sections of Nebraska. I think we're really getting, uh, really good snow out of this near a foot there. Uh, and then six to 12 inches is a pretty safe bet here. I think into the Northern great lakes. Uh, and then likely 6 to 12 inches as well here into the areas of uh, New England that get that heavy snow. Right now, I think just north of Boston probably getting snow uh, or more considerable amounts of snow, but more of upstate New York, Vermont, and New Hampshire with this storm. Uh, and then Boston should definitely at least see some light snow on the back side of this. So that's the first threat with uh, round one here. We also have that severe weather threat with this system. So we'll take a look at that as well here. Uh, you see, uh, we have that slight risk tomorrow here, stretching from Louisiana up the Mississippi River Valley all the way towards Paducah, Kentucky. So, you know, a pretty large swath here that is going to be dealing with that severe weather tomorrow. And we'll take a more in-depth look at that here with the tornado risk, uh, which you can also see here up to a 5% chance of seeing a tornado within a 25-mile radius. So um, nothing to ignore for January, definitely, uh, and we will watch that. And even that 2% risk stretches all the way down from 
uh, southern Louisiana, up towards Huntsville, Alabama, Nashville, Tennessee, uh, also in that tornado risk. So that's the tornado risk uh, in terms of the Storm Prediction Center's outlook. Let's take a look at future cash, though, with this severe weather. So taking a look at this here, uh, and sorry, I was taking some of my drink there, but uh, pretty clear right now across here in the south central U.S. Uh, but once we get into tomorrow morning, you'll see we'll get some showers to develop in here. Uh, and that will set the stage for a more intense line of storms uh, to form and maybe even a bit of a discrete self threat here with this once we get into tomorrow afternoon. So um, you definitely want to watch these discrete cells tomorrow. Uh, and see if any of those can get some enhanced spin and produce some of those tornadoes. But by the time we get into uh, later tomorrow around sunset, that should become a line of storms uh, and pose more of a damaging wind threat compared to tornado threat. Looking at some of those significant tornado parameters for tomorrow, uh, you can see those numbers really start to flare up as we get into tomorrow afternoon here. I think definitely into southern areas of that uh, risk into... Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, definitely seeing the higher threat of those rotating thunderstorms. Uh, but once again, we clear out by the time we get uh, into tomorrow night. So another thing I want to talk about, and this is uh, with round one and round two, is the rainfall threat. So again, I really expect a fire hose of moisture here into the southeastern United States. Um, the Weather Prediction Center here already putting probabilities of seeing you know, anywhere from two to four inches of rain here into sections of Georgia and the Carolinas out of that system going into this weekend. So definitely going to watch that. It'll be quite the rainy weekend, and we'll have to watch for some of that flooding with all of that rain coming. And this is just system one and two. This is not including whatever question marks we still have with system three. So a very, um, whether it's snow or rain, a very wet next seven to ten days, uh, or really from now through day 10 throughout the eastern United States. So let's go more in depth on kind of round two and three here um, and look at some of the longer range outlooks here and see what exactly we could be dealing with here with these rounds of storms and through the end of January. So starting with our GFS ensembles here, um, this blue blob here is what we're going to be dealing with into the uh, middle part of this week, round one, as I am calling it. Um, and then as we get further ahead into time here, going into this weekend, you see round two setting up here on the GFS. This is what is going to cause that fire hose of moisture into the southeast and potentially uh, winter storm conditions into the northeast. So uh, you see that kind of works its way up into the northeast. And then the next round, which I'm calling round three, uh, comes later around the 25th you see this getting going here and then once we bring that ahead into time that also gets going into the northeast uh, and with it brings this nice block of colder air down into the lower 48 so um, whenever you look at this map here going into that day 7 to 10 time period uh, that time that I think round 3 will come which could be quite impactful uh, what this kind of tells me is colder air in place uh, and a storm track kind of like this. So anytime you see that, uh, that's whenever you should get really intrigued in the eastern United States for winter storm potential. Um, of course, nothing set in stone, but this is definitely the best signal we've had of 2023 so far uh, for some of that winter weather. So that's the GFS ensembles. Uh, and I think after round three, uh, we're really going to hope we get something good out of round three because I think once we get later on into the start of February, it looks like that southeast ridge is really going to try to build in. Uh, so we really want to take advantage of this opportunity going through the end of January. Another way to look at that is that chance of snowfall accumulating. So we'll take a look at this as well. This is round one here you see crossing the plains, uh, the Midwest and into the Northeast. And then that sets the stage for round two going into this weekend. Uh, you see the areas most likely to get snow out of that here with the GFS ensembles uh, into the Midwest and up through the Northeast. And then we get ready for round three here on the GFS. Uh, and this is even a bit further south and east into the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. So uh, we'll watch that for sure. Uh, and again, we still have a lot to iron out with this, but there's definitely a signal there nonetheless. All right, so now looking at the euro uh, and looking at what it is showing, 
Uh, again, this is round one here, crossing the plains, going into the northeast. Then you see this next blue bit. That is round two. And you see how that kind of shoots through the northeast here. Uh, you watch this blue bit go up into the northeast. This is round two. You see that? And then round three getting going here on the euro. You can see this trough really diving down. Uh, and what that's going to do is help for this low pressure to enhance, feed off of that Gulf of Mexico moisture, uh, and really help to balloon um, as it potentially moves into the eastern United States. So another thing shown here, though, with that, that block of cold air coming down with that trough uh, and a likely storm track kind of between these two battle zones. So where you see that blue and that red fighting each other, that's a lot of the time where we get that storm track. So that combined with this cold blue kind of air that you see here could definitely spell trouble for the eastern United States. Uh, and then looking here at the Euro, uh, that kind of sticks around for a while before once again getting into February, that southeast ridge kind of tries to work its way back into the picture. All right, so now looking at the snowfall chances with the Euro, the same way we did with the GFS here. Um, you can see here, this is round one, working through the Midwest, Great Lakes, and the Northeast. Uh, and then this is round two with the Euro here. And you can see the Euro is a lot more bullish on this, getting those high probabilities, uh, very high actually here into the Northeast, into the interior Northeast, especially for round two. Uh, and then maybe even down here into the mountains of North Carolina up through West Virginia here into this weekend. Uh, but once we get into round three here, uh, you can see we also get those chances to return to a lot of the same area. So um, a lot to iron out here, but it looks like we get three rounds of storms here, uh, storms here to round out January. Uh, and it really will be quite an active period. I can promise you that. Now, as to who and all sees snow out of this, uh, we still have to iron that out. But if we can get that super favorable track around the 25th to 27th, I think we could definitely get um, possibly our best storm so far this year here across the East Coast. So with all that said, again, make sure you subscribe because um, I want you to stay up to date with all of this. Uh, and we really are building quite the community here. Uh, I've got some great people here and um, we're really just we like to interact and talk weather. So also, if you like the video, make sure you like it and share it with anybody here that you know along the East Coast, uh, just so everyone is prepared for this changing pattern as we go through the end of January. But with all that said, uh, again, thanks for watching, and I will see you all tomorrow.